Welcome to part two of our tutorial series on how to apply custom visual designs in Moss. In this part, we'll talk about how to prep local HTML and CSS files to make them ready to use in SharePoint Designer. We'll also take a look at the base CSS file that was created by Imagination. When we're getting ready to apply a visual design or skin to any CMS application, including Moss, it is important to begin with a solid, CSS-driven HTML template of that design. This template can be developed locally with your preferred method, such as hand coding or using an application such as Dreamweaver or Visual Studio. Here are some tips for creating the template. It is best to include the placeholders where dynamic components such as the navigation will go. There's no need to code or style them in HTML because these components will be applied and styled in Moss. Here is the HTML template that we'll use for the purposes of this demo. As you can see, there is simply placeholder text where the navigation and left column content will go. Even the text in the right side column is merely a placeholder. We will remove these placeholders after applying the design in Moss and replace them with the navigation and content controls. As we develop the HTML templates locally, it is important to follow the file structure of SharePoint Designer because that is where our code will eventually reside. The CSS and image files, as well as other assets such as JavaScript files, should reside in the appropriate folders within a folder called Style Library. Remember to include a space in the name Style Library. Our Style Library folders are prefixed with a code that is specific to our project or client name. This helps differentiate our custom folders from the default folders and files which already exist in the SharePoint Designer Style Library. In this example, the prefix is emag underscore. Here is the file structure for our actual demo template. Here's the HTML file and the style library folder. In this case, our folders are prefixed with demo underscore for demo. When I developed this CSS file for the custom demo design, I began with a base CSS file that Imagination has created specifically for Moss websites. Imagination has made this base CSS file available with our base master page for Moss. As we apply custom designs to Moss websites again and again, we found that certain default Moss styles needed to be overridden each time. We created the base CSS file to address these common areas. Let's review some of the styles that are included in the base CSS file. These classes and IDs have already been applied to the appropriate elements in the base master page. The admin bar includes the site actions menu and page editing feature. In our base master page, we have moved the admin bar outside of its comfort zone, so to speak. So we had to include a style in our base CSS file to tweak where the site actions link will appear in the page. Here's a screenshot of the site actions menu, which is part of the admin bar. If we did not apply the property text align right to the admin bar, the site actions link would appear on the left side of the page, but the menu items would still appear on the right, causing a disconnect for the user. When a user wants to modify the properties of a web part in Moss, they can activate the web part properties editor. In a default Moss design, the Properties Editor opens up within the layout of the page and the design elements are able to flow around it. But in our custom designs, many of which are fixed width designs, there is seldom enough room or flexibility to open the Web Part Properties Editor inside of the design. Therefore, in our base CSS file, we included a class which repositions the Web Part Properties Editor outside of the web page design. Again, this class has already been applied to the appropriate element in the base master page. When I say outside of the design, I simply mean that we have added absolute positioning to the web part properties editor so that it always appears at the top left corner of the browser. The property editor is now detached from the design and the layout of the website and therefore will not interfere with the design and layout of the website. When we assign our custom CSS file in the Moss website, it will be rendered after the core.css file that is present in all Moss websites. 
Our base CSS file includes some of the common styles from core.css, which you may want to override. These classes are empty in the base CSS file, so they may be used or not used, depending on your custom design. Here are some tips for overriding styles from core.css. When you are trying to figure out the class name of a MOS component that you need to override, you can use a DOM explorer such as the one found in the IE Developer Toolbar. View the site in a browser and use the Select Element by Click feature to view CSS information for different elements in the page. This will give you the name of any MOS default styles that you want to override. The default MOS class names are often applied to different elements meaning a table tag might be assigned the same class as an anchor tag in the code that is served up from Moss. Therefore, you might need to pinpoint these elements when building out the classes in your own CSS file. A really nice feature in Moss is the ability to create custom styles for use in the HTML editor in a Moss website. When a user edits content in the site, they will see a menu list of styles in the editor. In your custom CSS file, Use the following prefix for any class name that you want to be available in that styles menu, ms-rte custom dash. Here you can see our custom style showing up in the styles menu when a user edits the website content. So we have been talking about overriding the default styles that come with core.css. Generally, those are the styles found in MOS components or web parts within the web page, but many, if not most, of the styles in your custom CSS file will be specific to your website design. It is important to prefix the IDs and class names for your custom styles. This will help differentiate your custom styles from the MOS class names, especially if you need to examine source code to find out how MOS is rendering your page. We recommend using the same prefix for your IDs and class names that you used for your custom style library folders. This would indicate that all of your folders, files, and style names are unique to this custom MOS project. So that's the overview of our base CSS file and how to best prepare the HTML templates for MOS. In part three of this series, I will demonstrate the next step in skinning a MOS site, which is to prep our custom files in SharePoint Designer.